Oh my goodness, it has been a week of seismic political events and we want to now analyze them with our powerhouse roundtable. And uh, as always, we've got a great one for you, so let's tell you who's here today. Mark Caputo reports for Politico. He's covering the 2020 presidential race with a special emphasis on Florida. Chris Smith is an attorney in Fort Lauderdale and a former Democratic state senator from Broward County. Saman Movisagi Gonzalez is founder and managing attorney at the Florida Immigration Law Council. And it is so great to have you all here today. Got a lot to talk about. Boy, do we ever. <laughs> uh, Mark Caputo, let me begin by asking you, want to hear from everyone here, but you know, has this reached the tipping point the last 10 days, just startling political developments, kind of a tsunami effect that began with just this mention of a promise made by the president somehow. Then we saw the redacted transcript, then we saw the whistleblower complaint, then we heard about the alleged cover-up. I mean, how far does this go? It would be hard to see it not ending in impeachment, but considering the political sensitivities or complications or reality in Washington, it would be even harder to see President Trump being removed from office by the Senate if there is impeachment. Yeah, that would take 20 Republican senators joining every Democrat to, because it takes two thirds vote of the Senate to convict. Right, you can analyze it two ways. One of them is just political survival. The reality is if, if you're a Republican, a, a Donald Trump has an almost religious-like following. And if you're interested in staying office or making any policy, you're not gonna vote to remove him. Uh, then there is the policy. The reality is, is that Donald Trump has delivered to a lot of his base, specifically the evangelical base of all mm -hmm. things, uh, judges, which you'll hear about quite frequently in abor abortion-related matters. So. This is the, the horse they're riding, or the horse that some would say they're stuck on, but they're going to have to ride it through. Isn't this, Chris, the, this is, if you take politics out of it, which nobody <laughs> does, but let's just say we can, th this is the first time, you know, there was a Mueller investigation, Mr. Mueller's investigation it took two years. This is not only an allegation, but a corroboration from the White House to the whistleblower's allegations. It, at very least, it would be probable cause in a criminal inquiry. So in taking the politics out of it, why not go forward to investigate something like this? Well, I think the difference is this is one that the average citizen can follow. Mueller investigation was, well, he wasn't in office, he wasn't in office, we don't know about all this stuff, but anyone sitting around their kitchen table who watched an episode of Law and Order or watched any <laughs> kind of gangster show knows, you know, how these guys talk well, and who, are looking who, at who this. Who watched The Godfather. Yeah, and, 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 yeah <laughs> and they can say, okay, I hear what he said, I know what he meant, that's corruption and let's go. But one, one thing that, that I I've, haven't heard a lot of talk about is we keep saying that he wanted um, dirt on a political opponent, but more importantly, this was dirt on a former vice president, whether he's a political opponent or not. Yeah. I mean, and, and that kind of shocks the conscience that we have a current president going after a former person that held that office. And, and I think just as an American, it's like, why, why are we doing this? Yeah, uh, but so, he's so been my, running. Yeah, he's been running his uh, whole presidency like he's been running his business deals. I mean, even now we're reading reports that he's been shocked at why this is even going on and why this isn't even an issue that we're discussing mm -hmm. this, that he has to go around the whole politics to communicate with the president to get dirt on somebody else. I mean, this is what he's used to. These are his backdoor deals. And the fact that the whistleblower has came out and been able to obtain so much evidence and information in order to make it public is really surprising for him but for us it's like this is what we have been telling yeah. the american people of what's been going on with this administration yeah. i was just going to say dis despite all of that and despite the roughly third mm -hmm. of the country that will never go along yeah. with even an, imp an impeachment inquiry mm -hmm. there is corroboration from the white house I is mm -hmm. that not sort of the one thing you cannot get around, Mark, the corroboration of that call and, and an admission he, uh, the president asked for a favor from a foreign power related to an election. Right. Uh, I talked to uh, not a relative of mine with the same last name, Michael Caputo, who used to work for the Trump campaign, uh, has, sometimes uh, lives in Miami, uh, kind of a part-time Florida man, uh, works in both <laughs> Ukraine and in Russia. Uh, Mike laid out for me the Republican and the uh, Trump point of view here, which is that they see the <laughs> Russia hoax, as they call it, having a very strong Ukrainian component. And as you read the 
quasi transcript memo or whatever we want to call it, you'll see uh, President Trump is linking the uh, Russia probe and Ukraine. I, I think Rudy Giuliani was on George Stephanopoulos' mm -hmm. program prior to ours this morning saying that yep. that's not the case. Well, this is not the first time that Rudy Giuliani. That, no, no, no. That that it is that yeah. that Ukraine had nothing to do with Russia, uh, Russia interference in the election. Right. Well, that's uh, that. Uh, that uh, this is not the first time that Trump world has spoken with three or four mouths. The the thing we do see is like, for instance, the uh, Paul Manafort, who's the former campaign manager for Donald Trump, was fired after a black book of his contacts was leaked. That came from Ukraine. Uh, so there's a very strong belief in Trump world that at the center of the Russia hoax, their words, is Ukraine, and this is partly what's driving the president. I'm not saying it excuses it, but they believe their cause is just and right, and he's just trying to find out the truth. Yeah. And, that, and I would think you keep saying corroboration from the White House. I think they're corroborating maybe what was said, but their interpretation is totally different, and I think that's where they're hanging their hat on. The, the, the Rashomon effect. We're corroborating, right. he yes. said it, but our interpretation is well, totally right, different. Right, but wouldn't that be the probable cause? In other yes. words, an investigation may find nothing. We're certainly open to that, yeah, but wouldn't that be the probable yeah. cause to find and, that and out? And I'm glad you used that term because probable cause would lead them to investigate more and maybe get the actual tapes yes. and maybe get, okay, let's all hear what he said yeah, and how he said Simon, it. Simon, mm -hmm. you, you pointed out that in many ways this is Trump doing business as normal, as usual, as he's done throughout his career. Uh, one of the things that is different about this, speaks to Glenna's point, is that during the Mueller investigation, the White House stonewalled everything. They didn't want anybody to testify, go before Congress, say anything. They wouldn't, they refused to release documents. Lawsuits are still in process. Mm -hmm. But then here, as Chris says, uh, they released this rough, redacted <laughs> transcript of this conversation, the phone conversation. And it does, as Glenna says, I think, it, it's extremely damaging to President uh, Trump. I really, do, I mean, I really don't think that he thought this would be a big deal. Yeah. I really don't think that he thought that this, I mean, this is really what yeah. he's used to doing. And the fact that it has came out in such a shocking manner and all the pieces have been aligned, yeah. I, I really don't, you know, well, they did what they had to do in terms of releasing what they needed to release. That, that's actually a really good point but, because mm -hmm. in, it, if you read uh, into it, it looks like there are people in the White House who were the ones who tried to put it aside and well, keep it from public view. Well, they to the whistleblower. Not necessarily the <laughs> president know. And if it wasn't for the whistleblower blowing the whistle, I don't think we would have maybe yeah. even thought much about it either way, yeah. which is what they wanted us to think in well, the first place. they were so concerned in the White House, Mark, that they put it, the transcript of the conversation, maybe a recorded transcript, a copy of the conversation, into the secret cyber security file where only a few people have access to it. It certainly is uh, an example or a point that indicates that folks around the president realized he had a political problem brewing. Uh, one thing that is important to po point out, I've spoken to some people close to the president. There is a debate in the White House. Uh, there are some people who are angry at Mick Mulvaney, who is the acting chief of staff for having released it, uh, because they think they, they need to have a war room where they can kind of go to battle daily on you know trade information for information. The president, to your point, does not believe this is as serious as Russia. He does not think <laughs> that what he did here was fundamentally right. wrong. Right. On that note, yeah, quick break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Promise, we are coming right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We are in the midst of a very robust roundtable. <laughs> Um, uh, Chris Smith, as you well know, as you all know, uh, from West Palm Beach to Key West, there are seven members of Congress who represent South Florida. Six mm -hmm. of them are Democrats, and basically, well, you heard Donna Shalala earlier, now they all favor an inquiry, a, a impeachment inquiry. The one who does not uh, is Representative Mario diaz Balart. Here is what he had to say this week in a statement we tried to speak with him by satellite. We could not do that. Let's put up the statement here from Representative diaz Ballard. He said, after reading the transcript, it's evident that yesterday's speculation and conjecture got ahead of the facts. There is clearly no quid pro quo. I'll continue to base myself on facts and the truth, and the facts I have seen most certainly do not warrant impeachment. And, and frankly, uh, Mark, I would say Representative diaz Ballard is kind of right. We haven't seen enough evidence 
to warrant impeachment. That's what the whole process is about. Right. I, I'm, I'm not sure his point. Maybe he's saying that no matter what happens, he, he's not going to vote for impeachment, which is probably the, that the case anyway. Probably yeah. the case. Uh, but yeah. I mean, the reality is, is as we've discussed here, essentially uh, impeachment is essentially an indictment. There's enough mm -hmm. probable cause to proceed and, and, and go to kind of the grand jury, as it were, right. of the various House committees examining it. The question is, is if and when they actually do impeachment, how many articles, how many counts uh, mm -hmm. of impeachment will there be? We, we don't know. There are a number that there could be. Let's not forget that when President Trump was president, he had cut a check to his lawyer that was used to reimburse a former porn star, allegedly right. to keep her yeah. quiet. And that lawyer had already pleaded guilty to a criminal campaign finance violation. And the unindicted, or better said, the, the anonymous person in that indictment of President Trump's yeah. former lawyer is President Trump. So it uh, indicates I, he I, might I, have some real trouble. Yeah, I, I, I would bet, I don't know, Saman, you're a great lawyer, but I would bet that they are going to keep the the focus here in this impeachment inquiry, rather limited simply to this dealings between Trump and the Ukraine and Rudy Giuliani and everybody else well, who was involved. It, if it's a better argument for them and it's not to get distracted, I right. think that that should be the case. I mean, yes, there may not be enough evidence at this specific moment to do impeachment, but if there's enough evidence um, as for probable cause to open up an investigation, then that's where the Pro, you know, the process would begin from and then possibly to start impeachment proceedings. But I think that if they have enough evidence right now on what's going on with the transcript or even having maybe the whistleblower come out, and I think with those evidence, they'll be able to pursue it. They won't need to go to the porn star or any other previous no. dealings that have happened. Oh, what times we live in. Now, right? <laughs> this is what we have to talk about, whether or not we get the president for porn or we get the president for doing a backdoor deal with the president of Ukraine. I think Senator Sass had a great point when he, I mean, he kind of spoke to both sides. He said Democrats don't run for and with current impeachment, but Republicans, let's not circle the wagons. This is a process. This is now we're going to look for more evidence and see what's there. Mm -hmm. So I think on either side um, uh, of, of just saying now it's over, no more evidence. That's why we have this point now. That's why we got the next couple of weeks and Adam Schiff and his, his team are interviewing witnesses and finding more direct evidence. Let me ask you a question about, since you're another lawyer at the table, <laughs> you know, much has been said about the whistleblower does not have firsthand information <laughs> and, and so sort of culled from well, culled from a number of sources um, and not to say that it isn't perfectly legitimate mm -hmm. but people are raising the question of hearsay how is the whistleblowers complaint different from what might be hearsay evidence almost every investigation starts with hearsay I mean mm -hmm. you don't put the hearsay as evidence at trial to find someone guilty but you got to start somewhere someone has to call the cops and say hey I heard this happen um, and if you talk about the Clinton trial, Linda Tripp said, hey, mm -hmm. I heard about this thing that the president did. So, I mean, for, for even lawyers in the Congress to say, oh, it's hearsay, and people so be so disingenuous about hearsay, investigations start with hearsay. Every investigation, be it Bill Clinton, be it the guy who robbed the local liquor store, you got to start somewhere and have the investigation yeah. to find the evidence. Good explanation, thanks. Uh, let's go back uh, before we go on to other aspects of this to, to the Florida's, Florida's two senators, Rick Scott and Marco Rubio. And Mark, this week, Marco Rubio essentially said, um, I'm, I, I don't know that it was a great idea to uh, have that conversation, but, uh, you know, this is all revenge for having lost the election in 2016. Rick Scott said the same thing. I mean, they're sort of dancing around this. Well, yes, but their alternative is to not stand by President Trump. Yeah. And Rubio has done a great job kind of reinventing himself from the person who on the campaign trail warned that President Trump or Donald Trump would have been an erratic president, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, mocked his hand size, uh, as we remember. And now Marco Rubio has a great amount of influence in Western Hemisphere, right. which is the, kind of one Venezuela, of his Venezuela, Cuba, yeah. Right, so uh, he's not willing to trade that in. And uh, in Rick Scott's case, he's just always been aligned kind of philosophically or personally with the president. I don't see much changing there. How do you see the timeline for this going? 2020 elections, oh. I mean, legitimately start in a matter of months in Iowa. I, you know, that that's a they compact. gotta go quick. I do mean, they? Or right, no, no, that's I think do they? Have an, no, to have an impeachment, mm -hmm. you have to go quick because something else is going to happen. I mean, things right. happen so fast, <laughs> and if they wait too long, if the Congress mm -hmm. takes too long, 
between now and December, something's going to happen somewhere and takes. So while people are thinking about this, while people are looking at this and looking at the evidence, they're going to have to move quickly on it. Yeah, but well, do you think the Demo I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, Simone. I was going to say, do you think the Democrats at this point right now, close to the election, even want him to be impeached? Their base does. And I, that is what you're seeing in polling is two thirds to 70 percent of Democrats are pro impeachment. And that was before the Ukraine call. And I would imagine those numbers are even higher. Yeah. At well, a certain point, politicians, all politicians respond to their base yeah. and their bases are calling. I think the base are calling for him to do yeah. something because the base are looking at, OK, this guy did this and you guys just said something. He did this. You said something. He did this. So the base is saying finally do something. Yeah. Does the base know historically that the very few impeachments that have happened hmm. have been in the following you know, year have been detrimental no. to the party? I, I, I don't know how true that is, no. incidentally. I mean, remember that Al Gore well, probably would have been president had there not been 30,000 spoiled ballots in Palm Beach County mm -hmm. and 20,000 spoiled ballots in Duval County alone. So that kind of shoots that down. He was the also. The Brooks Brothers Suit <laughs> Rebellion, what did they oh, call it? Yeah, that was the Brooks Brothers <laughs> riot. I didn't even mention Miami Dade County. It's something like 15,000 spoiled ballots. I mean, we're. So. So that's kind of disproved. Also, Al Gore in 2000 won a majority vote. Yeah. So Democrats actually did rather well in 2000. So well, I'm, in I'm not sure that applies. And I think another important point is this, is you just mentioned uh, the Brooks column in the yeah. New York Times yes. earlier, and he pointed out how few people support impeachment. Well, a lot of people didn't support the reporting about Hillary Clinton's emails before 2016. And yet there was still a steady drumbeat of those mm -hmm. reports about yeah. those emails, and it affected public opinion in the end, according to Democrats. The same thing can happen with impeachment, is though people might say, hey, I don't want to see it, the drumbeat of information against Donald Trump might be de detrimental to his political health. All right, we're going to take a brief break. When we come back, we're going to talk, among other things, about Scott Israel and whether he may be reinstated uh, as sheriff by the Florida Senate. Welcome back. Turning to some news that kind of really shook up, especially Broward County this week, when uh, Special Masters, the State Senate's Special Master Dudley Goodlett, issued a recommendation that the suspended Broward Sheriff, Scott Israel, deserves to get his job back after he was in Tallahassee in mm -hmm. June, appealing the governor's suspension of him for all that went wrong in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas mm -hmm. High and Fort Lauderdale's mass shooting. Uh, that recommendation, Chris Smith, <laughs> was that surprising to you as it surprised so many? Uh, not at all, for a couple of reasons. One, I, I served with Dudley Goodlett, and knowing the type of person that he is, he is a lawyer's lawyer. A he's former Republican lawmaker. Republican we say, lawmaker. Yeah. We served in the House together. Yeah. Um, and he's one of those guys that the Florida bar comes to a lot in the legislature. So he's a lawyer's lawyer. So I knew he would follow the facts and then being up there at the trial, I was at the trial and to see the lack of evidence as to the allegations, I kind of saw which way Dudley was going because if you, if you watch the trial and watch the lack of evidence as to the allegations that's thrown out there, there was really no way for Dudley to really rule. The, the, yeah. uh, the not only lack, well, it's not so much a lack of evidence as a lack of a case. The governor's attorney did not put on a case. Uh, Sheriff, suspended Sheriff Israel did. And now it goes to the Senate Rules Committee well, and then the full Senate. And but I just I wanted to ask Mr. Mm -hmm. Politics over there. The special master said, I know the sheriff had said this was politically motivated by the governor. He put that out there. But what the special master said was, I'm not looking at any politics, no motivations, that's not a consideration, I'm looking at the evidence. So now politics is sort of the headline. It's shock, shock, there's politics <laughs> going on in the Florida Senate. Yeah, there's 23 yeah. Republicans out of the 40 member Senate. Uh, here's, here's what this comes down to at this point. Are there 21 votes to remove Scott Israel permanently? I mean, I still think, yeah, because there are 23 Republicans. Republicans hate Scott Israel. Uh, the Republican governor had him suspended. So it's probably leaning that way. Yeah, and someone beyond yeah. that, here we are two and a half months from the beginning of a legislative session where the agenda is in large part driven by the governor who has veto power over spending. Uh, and these guys don't want to get crossways 
you know, with the governor. But it's, it's, it's going to be tough. And when the Senate appointed Dudley Goodlett as the hearing officer, I, to, I took that as a signal that they were taking this thing serious because there are political hacks that you can appoint to, to come yeah. up with the report you want. Dudley Goodlett is far from being a political hack and being a Republican legislator and also uh, was counsel in the House. So I took it that the Senate was really going to look at we want to get this done fairly. But uh, for them to decide, this is the decision they have. Do we follow a governor who's mm -hmm. saying emotionally we need to blame somebody, hold somebody accountable, or do we follow someone we serve besides, a lawyer's lawyer who looked at the facts and said, don't do this. And if they decide to keep him removed, that clearly is political. And I mean, there's, there's no other way to look at it. I was going to say, I don't think that this topic could be any less political than it already is. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you said it perfectly correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that they want to go after Scott Israel for negligence and for not doing his duties properly, it's going to set a very bizarre standard for when these ca catastrophic events occur. Who, you know, where does the buck stop? Who gets the blame or for this? Any of it. And I, and I hate to keep going back, but in Orlando this week, you had an officer e uh, arrest a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. Right. Fingerprint, take them down, take pictures and everything. Should the sheriff so be, now, go down is that for that? Sheriff, sheriff take him out? Because, of course, that officer wasn't right. trained well and wasn't trained, and so they arrested a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. Answer that question. I mean, no, they shouldn't. I mean, <laughs> and I think Dudley Gully answered that question. Right. He said, if you have procedures in place and if you have training in place, which the record shows there was procedures and training for these officers to react a certain way, if that officer don't react that certain way, you're setting a bad precedent to just automatically remove the sheriff. And if the Senate does this, I think you're going to have, after every single incident in the state of Florida, you're going to have legislators run into the governor saying, hey, yeah. Let's remove this, the, move, remove this person. It's going to be a sting, though, to the governor because this is the flag that he was flying, and three days after he was uh, elected, he went ahead and removed right. him. And, so. and he promised the Parkland right. parents yes. right. he would do this, yeah. and he made good on his promise. But, you know, Mark, just strategically, politically, um, if Scott Israel is not reinstated by the state Senate in his re-election campaign, he says he's going to run for re-election, he's going to say, a reputable, upstanding Republican special master looked into it and he said, I didn't do anything wrong, so reelect me. Of course, and this is the People's Republic of Broward County we're in. <laughs> it is not your favorite Republican. <laughs> it is, it is, Broward is the Florida of Florida as well. Uh, this is a county where hating the Republican is going to be great. You could not hand Scott Israel a better campaign uh, yeah. tool than to run against the governor who is largely despised by the very great number of Democrats who populate this county. Oh, right. Chris was talking earlier, he thinks that, that uh, the sheriff, or better said, the former sheriff, Israel, probably has an inside straight or an inside shot of, of winning the election anyway. Yeah, because I mean, he, he just comes out and say, hey, they removed me only for political purposes. Do we want Republicans in Tallahassee running Broward County? I mean, this, this will be decided in a Democratic primary, and I think that's the biggest difference. It's not a nonpartisan race. This will be a Democratic primary mm -hmm. where you will have a Republican governor and then a Republican Senate, if they don't reinstate him, giving him that inside straight. So in the, in the primary, who is uh, Sheriff Tony, that's the current that's sheriff, exactly who I was Tony, ask for. is running as a Democrat yes. in the primary? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he's, he did say he was going to run? Yes, he's yes. running as, okay. he's running so. as a Democrat as a Democrat in a Democratic primary, a crowded Democratic primary. Right. So the Broward. winner will be determined in August. I mean, mm -hmm. the primary, yeah. forget it, that's yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, well, let's see this to the end then. So you have a current sheriff, if he is doing mm -hmm. an exemplary job, and he is a Democrat in a Democratic county, why wouldn't a voter vote for him? Because he shouldn't be there. The voters said, well, he shouldn't be there in the first place. Why are we going to punish Scott Israel and keep that punishment going by these Republicans. These people sitting up in Tallahassee that are not in Broward, that have nothing to do with Broward. Well, governor. Well, some, but, some do. Yeah, yeah, yeah some, <laughs> some, some do. do. But you, I, I foresee your Broward senators all voting to reinstate. Your Broward residents are saying, we can't, even though this guy's done a good job and the current sheriff has done some, has done some stuff, mm -hmm. but he shouldn't be there in the first place. This report clearly shows that this was a political power grab by Tallahassee, and Broward Democrats aren't going to allow that political power grab to continue. You know what, I, I just, uh, whenever we talk about something like this, I think about the Parkland parents 
-hmm. and someone mm -hmm. being or something or someone's mm -hmm. being held responsible for what happened and really that has not happened yet the people in the many some have I should say the many layers of things that have gone wrong those parents have not yet seen yeah. justice and accountability that happened in, in January in when January, Nicholas Cruz when goes the, on trial when the trial yeah. takes place in January uh, Nicholas Cruz uh, who I don't think there's any question <laughs> yes. about his guilt. The only question is about the punishment. Right. Is it death or life in prison? If he pled guilty, it mm -hmm. would be life in prison. Sure would be nice if the FBI did his damn job, though. I, there yeah. are you layers know. prior right. to... There, there, were, there, yes. they were, there were warnings and warnings that were pretty clear mm -hmm. and well. For yeah. one reason or another, that didn't happen. And the BSO failed them and yeah. the school system. Yeah. Many failures led to it. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you all. Great roundtable. <laughs> Come back mm -hmm. again maybe next Very week. Very soon. <laughs>